Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks. I love your background. Yep. I know where that's at. <laughs> there are two people that are on this call that don't have their name. Uh, all it says is iPhone guest and attendance is taken by your name, not by cell phone. So you're going to have to get on there and put your name in if you're one of the two people. So you get credit for being here to meet the education code requirements. I believe I have the iPhone, me, uh -huh. but yeah. I'm not sure how to change. Uh, when you sign in, um, it'll, uh, it asks you to change your, um, you can type your name in like I have to every time I sign in. Okay. Okay. Oh. I mean, I'll, I'll take a verbal roll call from now on. I mean, from now, I'll be for today. But just I want the class to be aware that when we do these Zoom meetings, if all I see is iPhone guest, you, it counts as an absent. You have to have your name. Okay, and Zoom lets you type in your name right before you hit join the meeting. Like if I didn't sign in, I, mine would say Android. So I have to... Um, type over Android and put my name in there. So we'll get started here in a, in a couple of minutes. I still have some students. Uh, signing in. Still have people join in our meeting. Okay, we are um, going to get started. This will be a, a short meeting. Uh, the main purpose of this meeting was to comply with the California Education Code for online classes, which means that online students must complete and ch must check in on the first day of class. So this requirement uh, is met by simply you attending this meeting and do a substantial amount of online work. So substantial amount of online work for me is to complete the introduction um, assignment that you find in the getting started module near the bottom. Okay, students that fail to do that or they're on this call will be subject to being dropped uh, from the class because they didn't check in as required. So I want to thank you all. I got FIRE 001 and FIRE 007 together. So I want to first take a couple of minutes and go over. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. I want to go over a couple of items in the course, and then I want to make sure that everybody that's on this call gets the extra credit, because every time you attend a Zoom meeting, you get extra credit points towards your overall grade near the end of the semester. So um, I want to talk a little bit about FIRE 001. Okay, I did do a pre-course orientation a couple of weeks ago, maybe two and a half weeks ago when the course was opened. So students can get a jump start on the work. I wanna make sure, cause last semester, half the class didn't realize that this was an accelerated four week class. And it's like, I scratched my head and said, you didn't read, you know, you didn't read the, um, the course syllabus. So that means, a, that means about a chapter a day. This will be the last semester 
that FIRE 001 will be a prerequisite for the entire FIRE program. Um, so starting in the summer and in the fall, you don't have to take FIRE 001 first. You can take FIRE 002, FIRE 005. You can take any FIRE class because there'll be no prerequisites. Um, whoever just joined us, if you can mute your phone, we're getting a lot of background noise. Um, I also wanted to bring your attention to there's a couple of requirements for the FIRE classes. The first requirement is you have to be on and check your student email and your course announcements and the comments in the grade book daily. And I'm going to explain why here in a minute. First of all, let's go back to the course announcements. Okay, the, the, the four most recent course announcements are found on your homepage. And if you don't check these daily, okay, and we post several announcements, you're going to miss them. And then you're going to be lost. All right, so um, every day. Now, when I say daily, I'm talking about once or twice a day, especially in an accelerated online class such as FIRE 001, because you're going to be left behind. The other thing is in FIRE 001 and 007, I went ahead and opened up the entire course for the semester so my A students can finish the course. I've already got several students that are already done with module one, module two, and have already taken the midterm. All right, those are the kind of students that we want to hire in the fire service. So, um, you know, your reputation in the fire service is being made uh, when you're in school. So all of us fire chiefs, all of us that teach in fire technology are all fire chiefs on local fire departments. So I wanted to make sure that when you do your work, you do the best you can, can do to set yourself head and shoulders. The second thing is why do I need to check the comments in my grade book? The reason you need to check the comments in your grade book is because a lot of times if you're working ahead and it's like, um, and I will, I will give an example here in a minute. Somebody on the discussion board for the introduction, all they did was just write out the sentence, I mean, write out the question, and then gave me a two-word answer. That's not a discussion. That's an F. All right? And so I didn't grade it because it's not really due yet. So I commented uh, on it. And that's why you need to go in there and look at your, your grading comments because I'm going to let you go back and redo the work as many times as you want, okay, so you can get yourself up to an A grade. And then the emails, that's how we communicate back and forth on a daily basis. And so you can see um, I've got five emails here that I'm going to read um, when I get done with our um, conference call. But anyway, this is the, um, the home page. And I've already gotten questions from students about um, does the, uh, when does the class end? Is it, May, is it uh, May 26th or May 25th? And I'm saying, did you go back and look at the um, homepage and read everything? All right, and it clearly states so another mistake students make in an online class is they fail to go through Canvas and read page by page. So those students that want to take a, uh, a, an undergrad uh, program and then a graduate program, uh, one of the, like if you took a class from me at USC or UCLA, and you didn't take the time to read this, you were automatically dropped. We don't take the time when we have 150 students in the class to devote to students that can't read directions. Okay, so I wanna make sure that you start developing that habit now. So you'll be very, very successful, especially in the fire service or in criminal justice, if you wanna get promoted um, past the rank of engineer or um, past the rank of sergeant in the police department, because now a bachelor's degree is gonna be required. So um, keep that in mind. Uh, so to enter the class, you click on the fire truck, and then I wanted to go down and make sure that everybody reads every, this is a page. Canvas is set up like a textbook, 
a module is like a chapter, and then within each module are pages. But I wanted to go down because there have been several students already that are receiving substandard grades for their discussion board assignments. And then I tell them to go back and read the discussion board our, uh, policy. And basically it's this, you have to write using the, the rules of English, using proper paragraphs, and make sure it's, it's free of misspelled words, punctuation, poor grammar, syntax, everything. Because if you can't learn to write in college, you're not going to be able to make it out of paramedic school or off probation in the fire service. Because you will be writing reports every single day. And guess when they're due? Before you go home. And there's nothing more embarrassing for a rookie to get called into a, a, a civil trial because the department's being sued, okay, because he misspelled words. And the word that he misspelled was a medication. And the medic thought, interpreted it another way, okay, and gave the wrong dosage. And the plaintiff's spouse had died. And then the plaintiff's attorney takes your report and holds it up and shows the jury about and starts putting the firefighter down about if this firefighter can't read or write, what do you think their standard of care was? So you don't want to be in that situation. So I, um, I want to make sure that everybody understands that starting with chapter one, you have to write as if you were the subject matter expert. And I have posted my reply to the discussion prompt in chapter one. And that's what I expect from my students. All right, when you reply and uh, make sure you give me the student's name. So the whole class knows who you're replying to. Otherwise you just lose five points. Okay. Hey chief. Yes. This is, this is Tyler. I apologize for being a few minutes late. Okay. I, I was on a couple of weeks ago for your orientation. Are we required to be here today as well? No, if you were on the orientation, um, you don't have to be here um, today. The orientation was to give the A students and the in-service firefighters a jump start on the class. Okay, thank you okay. very much. I need, to, I need to commute to paramedic school, so thank you. Yeah, Tyler, did you get the driver operator flyers? I did, thank you, and I forwarded out to my local training officers. Thank you very much. All right, all right, take care. Take care, thank all you. All right, sir. bye. Okay, so this is what's due, and I wanna make sure that people understand that each discussion has two due dates. The first due date is when you um, reply to the initial prompt, okay? And then the second due date is when you have to reply to two other students' posts. Every discussion has two due dates. So if students simply put name and then they write their name and then they put city of residence and they put 29 palms and they put occupation, marine, educational goals, college, you're gonna get an F. That's not a discussion. Okay, a discussion is just that. It is a collegiate discussion. And there are some people, Katie did an outstanding job Okay, Noah did a great job responding. So did Amanda. Okay, they see here, this is not a discussion. All right, so um, again, moving forward, starting with chapter one, and I'm gonna go and give an example because I want everybody to do good in this class. Because believe it or not, when I do background investigations for other departments on my other job, the first place I go to is I go to the college and I look at their transcripts, their grades, and their written work. And what I look at is, did the student complete what they started? Did the student submit all assignments on or before the due date? What is their command of the English language? Okay. Do they have a consistent history of throwing their hands up and dropping out when the going gets tough? And you see the impressions that we make um, to the background investigator. And if I look at somebody and all they got was C's, D's, F's, and W's, do I really want to invest $48,000 as a fire chief on hiring this guy on my fire department? 
No, not at all. All right, so all your work is being reviewed, okay, before we even talk to the neighbors, before we even do a DMV check, before we even do an FBI and NCIC criminal history check. Because if you're taking um, a community college class, which is the first prerequisite, okay, to becoming a firefighter, and you can't handle that, then the perception to the fire chiefs is you can't handle being in the fire service. So um, this is why I want to make sure that if we, if you, if guys and gals are going to do this, let's do it right the first time, and let's make it count. All right. So everybody should have been uh, been through all of this. Uh, the student form is basically an ungraded discussion. It's where you can ask questions for everybody. And then um, the assignments, there was a question on the homework assignments. And basically, um, you write out the question, and then A stands for answer, and then you give me the answer. All right. And if there's if it's not submitted in this format, it's not going to be accepted. Why? Because it's an indication that uh, the student can't follow directions. So that's why it's so important to look at the directions and don't assume the directions are the same for every assignment because they're not. And then you have the grading rubric if you want to see how it's going to be graded. Um, the lectures have been recorded. There are the lecture notes that are put into a PowerPoint format um, for you. I also put together a study guide. Um, and I made sure that everything that's in this study guide, if you want to enlarge it, you click on the X in the lower right. And I made sure that everything that I put in here is on the, the quiz, the module exam, the midterm, and the final. So. When you listen to the lecture, guess what? You don't have to take the notes because I've already done it for you. All right, this is a great study tool. Um, these are videos having to do with chapter one. Um, you might want to take a look at the physical ability test. Uh, this is the... Uh, Los Angeles, Orange County, Biddle. I'm a senior um, proctor for that. And it's amazing, only one out of 10 people pass this because they either like get up one day and say, I wanna be a firefighter. And then they don't work out. They don't prepare themselves and they come down and they can't even do the first, um, they can't even drag the, uh, the two and a half inch line, uh, you know, 300 feet. So. I want to make sure that you guys take a look at these videos because every chapter has videos that are specific to the content that you're reading. All right, here's a discussion board. So for those of you that have never been in college before on a discussion board assignment, this right here is called the discussion prompt. Okay, so you can see here's the first due date. So which means by Thursday, February 4th, you have to post your prompt, okay? Which means you have to write as if you were teaching, okay, the class about what is the role of human resources and or work ethics in the fire service. And then this is where students make their mistake. Okay, you see what this says right here? It says you might consider the following suggestions to help you get started with typing in the box. So if students just simply write this out and then give me a one sentence answer, that's not a discussion. They are suggestions. They are thought provoking questions to get you thinking. You don't even have to use any of these. All right. Nor do you have to use information in the textbook. You can use Firehouse Magazine, Fire Engineering Magazines, you can use the internet. You just can't copy and paste because we use Verisite, which is a plagiarism tool uh, 
that we use in colleges to catch students that copy and paste. And um, you don't wanna do that. All right, so you wanna make sure that everything is in your own words. Then, um, this is the second due date. You gotta have two replies by Sunday. So I gave you an example of what a collegiate post is. And you can take a look at mine. You can see the proper use of paragraphs and it's a discussion, all right? Because we want to see how well you communicate in the written form and what your command of the English language is. All right, and then um, two people. Um, can re yeah, You guys can always use my post, okay, as an example to follow. But when I take a look, like Isaac, I don't mean to pick on you, my friend, but you see how you just wrote out the question and then you gave me the answer? Okay, that's not, this is not a collegiate discussion. Okay, go back and look at mine. This is a collegiate discussion. You need to prove to the class that you are the subject matter expert when it comes to human resources, hiring practices, or why ethics is so important in the fire service. I did not grade any responses to the discussion yet because it's not due. This is why I wanted to, to um, go, over, go over this with you. So when you get done with posting your discussion, okay, don't forget to go back for the two replies because I've had students that have written excellent, I mean, outstanding collegiate posts, and then they then post their two replies and they, they wound up getting an F. So then I go through, I give you a review of what's gonna be on the exam. And then the next thing is the, is the quiz. All quizzes and module exams, midterm and final exams, you get two attempts on each exam. I told Canvas to only score the highest of the two attempts. All right, and um, that's how every chapter is laid out. The same now with Fire 007, that is a full 16 week class. All right, so you're doing one chapter a week. But in Fire 001, it's one chapter a day, okay, starting today. So um, you'll be done in four weeks. So you could take Fire 002, then you can get done with Fire 002. You could take Fire 005, and you don't have to wait a full semester. So like I said, beginning in the summer and the fall, there are no more prereqs. You're free to take any and all Fire classes. The other thing I wanted to go over with the class is the Fire work experience. Um, I will give four units of college credit up to 16 units of transferable credit for people that want to participate in the fire work experience program. And what that is, is you um, get to go up and we'll, you and I will sit down. It's a transcripted grade and we'll have three learning objectives for the semester. All right. So if you put in 240 hours which is 10 24 hour shifts during a 16 week period. All right, and you, you successfully complete your three learning objectives. That's an A for the class. And so I wanna make this available. I, um, I made it, I make it available to my Rio Hondo students, to the College of the Desert Fire Technology students. So this is for you. If you decide to join the Yermo Calico Fire Department, your, your seniority in the California Fire Service starts the day I administer the oath. So you'll be working alongside paramedics, EMTs, firefighters. Uh, you'll be at running calls and you'll be performing as a firefighter. You do not have to go through the fire academy to, to participate in the work experience program or to join the department because we have our own in-service training to start you on your path for your firefighter, IFSAC, firefighter one, firefighter two. It does count if you want to go to paramedic school for the thousand hours of working EMS all the time that you put in on this fire department. You do get paid if you go out on a strike team assignment, either as an EMT 
Like right now, all of my EMTs are getting paid because I have them working in the ERs at the local hospitals to supplement their staff. So they're getting paid 28 bucks an hour. Okay, and they're, they're, they're currently my students. So I wanted to make sure that if you are interested, um, the course is F-I-W-E, that stands for Fire Work Experience 083. And you sign up for that down in the Office of Instruction and you see um, that's down there in phase two. And Jordan, do you remember the lady's name down there? The admin person? I don't remember the name off the top of my head. Yeah. But I, they keep on changing every other week. It seems like who works there. Uh, I know. But um, if you're interested, you can give me a call. Okay. And I can guide you in so you can see if this, if, it, if that's the career path you want to take, because uh, you'll be running calls, you'll be doing fire inspections. And it's kind of neat uh, because you'll be working with other students from other schools. And then we do the large study groups in the evening. And you can actually go out. Uh, and look at the fire equipment and watch the videos and then go out and practice on the stuff that you're learning in class. And I think what a great way to gain experience, start your seniority in the fire service and get an easy four units a semester. You can do that up to four times or up to 16 units. Okay, if 240 hours, that's 10 24 hour shifts. So if you, all you wanna do is 60 hours, that's one unit. 120 hours is two units, 180 hours is three units, and 240 is four units. All right, so I wanted to make sure that everybody understands um, that you in the fire program, regardless of what class you're in, are eligible for the fire work experience program. I can honestly say that the I have a 97% uh, success rate for when people finish our fire program and they've been through the work experience, they've been hired. Now, Katie Volner is working now for San Diego City Fire Department. Um, Laura, okay, has now working for the city of Cala Mesa because they come to the department with work experience and with a degree. And these departments are just um, hiring people right and left. So if you, if you again, if you want to set yourself head and shoulders amongst everybody else applying for those coveted jobs, um, this is one way to do it. Because we have a lot of applicants that are hiring, that are filling out applications. They may have all the education, but they don't have any experience. Or we'll get somebody that has experience, but no education. So I want to make sure that, that all of you are afforded this opportunity. It's a great program. All right, does um, anybody have any questions um, for me? I am pretty much went over everything. Um, I want you guys and gals to know you have access to me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can call me, you can text me. If you text me, just say, hey, Jim, it's Katie. I'm in your Fire 001 class. Okay, I'm gonna be calling you because if I don't recognize your number, I just think you're some salesman trying to sell me fire hose or something. Okay, so make sure you, you send me a, a, a little text message. All right, does anybody have any questions for me? I did find out who it was, Chief. Who? Deanna. Yeah, Deanna Johnson's her name. Jordan, you're muted. I was going to put you. her stuff in the chat box for her email and phone number. Okay, you're going to put it in the chat box for the class? Yeah. All right, great. There so uh, anybody else have any questions for me? Okay, so moving forward, the, um, the Zoom meetings are always going to be extra credit. All right, so if you cannot attend a Zoom meeting because of work obligations or family obligations, you will not, and I repeat, will not be penalized. All right, so I don't want anybody stressing out. The sole purpose of Zoom meetings is to be able to stay in touch with the class and to help. If you notice on the course syllabus, there are office hours, okay? Those office hours are required by the college, but my office hours to my fire students are 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Jordan, go ahead. You remember, you're still on mute. Yeah, are we getting extra credit for this one too? This yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay. 
I'm going to be taking roll call here in a minute. Okay, sorry. Okay, okay. Any other questions? Katie, um, is everything as clear as mud now? Yeah, it all made sense when I got the email back. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense now that I asked a question. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, if anybody wants uh, Captain uh, Tony Mareb, she is uh, my captain at, at Yermo Calico uh, Fire Department. Um, let me know and I will give you her cell phone number and contact information. Uh, so if you want to come up and do ride alongs, you know, that's extra credit. Okay, because it's not really required for this class. But if you go above and beyond and show initiative that you want a career in the fire service, I'm going to reward you with extra credit. Okay, if you choose not to participate in ride alongs or the work experience program, there's absolutely no, and I repeat, no penalty. Okay, I just want to make sure. Everything you do outside of class that's fire related, you're going to get rewarded for it. All right? It just demonstrates how sincere you are about wanting a career in the fire service. All right, any other questions? Um, am I clear about the discussion board? I just, somebody, um, I put up here this morning the proper use of paragraphs. Somebody wrote a, a beautiful discussion, okay, that was like uh, two feet long, but it was all one paragraph. And if I was to grade that, that would have been an F, okay, because there was no paragraphs. So um, I put in the thing about the proper use of paragraphs. Any other questions? All right, so Jordan has posted Deanna Johnson's uh, phone number and her work email, so uh, you can contact her, okay, and get the application for the work experience program. Like I said, it's a great way to tie everything together. Um, a lot of my EMT students are in that work program because they're up there, they're learning something in class, and then boom, they're out there running calls you know, with an experienced EMT and paramedic, and then they come back to class and you can see like their, their eyes, you know, like the light bulb came on. Now they understand exactly why we're doing it this way. So um, Bradley, are you good to go? Did I answer all your questions? Yeah, I'm good to go, thank you. And Noah, what about yourself? No, are you good to go? Did I get all your questions answered? Good. Isaac, what about you, my friend? Did I clear up anything that you might want to know about discussions? No, she loud and clear. All right. Yeah, it's just um, it, it's just that is like the biggest complaint from my my colleagues in the fire service that the young men and women coming into the fire service today don't know how to write reports and they write like they text. And so um, in, our, in our advisory committee meetings, which the county fire chiefs attend, they strongly encourage the colleges to start emphasizing teaching the young men and women, if they want to be successful and get off probation, the, um, how to write, all right? And I cannot emphasize enough um, about how embarrassing it was um, for a couple of people that I went to court with when the defense or the plaintiff's attorney just tore their report up one side and down the other. And it made the poor, it made the poor girl shrink all the way down in, in the witness stand because the plaintiff's attorney just made her look like she was totally incompetent by the way that she wrote her report. We don't want that to happen to any of you at all. Um, Amanda Lopez, what about yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm good about the class. I'm going to email you about the book. I've been having an issue getting it. Okay, not a problem. I can get you um, uh, directly in touch with the publisher if the bookstore is giving you issues, okay? Um, I just, if you had the first two chapters, uh, she said you might have them um, like on a PDF. Uh, uh, yeah, because it's been on back order at the bookstore. Wow. 
Okay. Um, let me see. I'm going to go to the campus later on today, and I think I have some extra books in my office. And um, if so, I'll send you an email, and okay. uh, and I'll have you go by and uh, pick it up. How's that? Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right. Um, who's on the iPhone? That would be me. Ah, how are you? Uh, I'm very good. Um, I. I did want to do the work study, but I don't think um, I could just yet. Would that be open for maybe another yes. time or is it? Well, let me tell you, um, I got five Marines up there right now working. And what they do is they, they schedule themselves. The only requirement is um, 240 hours in 16 weeks for the four units. So you basically, or what they did, I have a, a gunny, a sergeant, a corporal and a lance corporal up there right now. And they're just working right around their duty schedule. Okay. So like on but the yes, weekends. It's, yes, it's on the weekends. Absolutely correct. And um, it is offered every semester. Okay. Yeah. Every semester. So uh, uh, hopefully you'll take advantage of it. And it's like I said, I've, I've had some students in the past that have been up there and, and got to work. And then they decided, and I'm not making this up. Um, I didn't realize the fire was that hot. Um, I can't stand having a baby die in my arms. Um, I didn't think when I was doing CPR, I'd break ribs and then they quit. And that's okay because this isn't for everybody. All right. It's, this isn't for everybody, but I would rather have them find that out now than to go through a whole college program spend up to $8,000 going through a fire academy only to find out this isn't for them. So, you know, that's the other purpose of the work experience program too uh, for fire. So they average up there at Yermo about two, one to two calls a day. And the rest of the time we're training. So you'll get auto extrication training, EMS training, rescue training. Um, we do live burns with the Marine Corps logistics base up there and uh, so it's it's pretty interesting any other questions all right i i am going to share my screen one more time because i want to make i want to make sure that i get um everybody's extra credit Okay, who is who is on this call for in the Fire 001 class? Anybody? Katie, Katie, you're on the call, right? Yeah. I'm in Anybody that Anybody else? And your name? Gabriella Moreno. That's right, right here. Okay. I'm in the class also. I'm Amanda. Okay, Amanda. Isaac as well. Got it, Isaac. Anybody else? Or did I get everybody? I am in the fire 007. Okay, I'm gonna move over to that class here in a minute. So I'm done with fire 001. All right, we'll move over to fire 007. I do have a question when we're done with all this, Chief, too. Not, not a problem, Jordan. Okay. Uh, let's see. Jordan is here. Uh, Tyler was here. Who else was here? Me, I'm all the way in the bottom. All right. I'm here. And that is Crystal. Ooh. I as well. Okay. I got Tyler, uh, Bradley Hamilton or Kevin Hammond? Uh, yeah, I'm here, Bradley. Okay. Okay, um, one last comment from, from me is 
please make sure you you check um, your uh, course announcements, your CMC student email, and your gradebook comments um, daily. All right. I mean, the, the state is really cracking down on, especially if you're getting any kind of tuition assistance. And um, so it's like I said, the, the, I can see who's checked in to the class and who hasn't and how long each student has been in the class. So I want to make sure that um, we stay compliant. All right, Jordan, any question? Uh, what's your question? Is it, was it intentional that the fire 002, 004, and 005 class were changed from four weeks to eight weeks? Yes. There was a, there was a, uh, there was a reason for that. And it had to do because they were being taught by part-time instructors, not full-time. Okay, I was just trying to figure it out because I was like, wait a second. I know this class is four weeks now, it's no, eight weeks. What's going on yeah. here? I like this. Well, it's, it's like I said, starting the summer, everything's going to go back to normal. So um, the freshmen coming in from high schools, they can take any class, fire 005, 004. They don't have to take the prereq. The state has lifted that. It's an excellent idea. I okay. Um, I, I also want to make sure the class knows that um, fire 081 and fire 084 is a California state fire marshal class um, that you will get a state cert from. That I'm going to be teaching that in um, their one week classes. I'm going to be teaching that in March. So if you're interested in attending those classes to start your fire career and get your state fire training record up and going, uh, send me an email and I will send you the course flyer on how to enroll on that. Okay, because um, one of the good things about um, having me as your instructor is I'm only one of four master fire instructors in the state of California. So I'll be teaching a lot of state fire marshal classes and, and issuing state certs. Those of you that come up and work at Yermo, which is the station behind me, um, you will be receiving state fire marshal certs too for your training and from the US Forest Service because we do a lot of wildland work. You can see our brush engine right there. All right, um, just to give you an idea, a little bit about Yermo, it's located off Interstate 15 between Barstow and Baker, California. Uh, we have over 400 square miles that, we're, that we are responsible for. Uh, we have Interstate 15, we have Interstate 40, we have the Calico Mountains, the Calico Ghost Town, we have Kinder Morgan Underground Pipeline Distribution Center, we have the largest rail yard in the United States right behind the station, and so our guys stay pretty busy, okay, and like I said, um, it's a, it, they're learning all the time, so, um, you know, I would uh, welcome anybody that wants to come up there and start your fire career. Okay, so it is a California State Fire Service, so you will get a California State Fire Department ID card. Um, you will get a firefighter ID number. Okay, if so, if you took if you take Fire 081 and 084, at the conclusion of that, you can go to DMV and you can get your firefighter endorsement on your driver's license. Okay, so which makes you a lot more marketable when you go start applying for your career jobs because you've already been trained on how to drive and pump fire apparatus. So again, fire 081 and 084 is going to be in March. So if you're interested, send me an email and boom, I'll send you the flyer. So you'll be in class with people from all over the state of California, uh, firefighters full time and, and reserve and and volunteer firemen as well, um, trying to get um, those two certs so they can get promoted to fire apparatus engineer. So the thing about it you, that you guys have is I'm gonna open up the course early for you all on Canvas so you can start getting a head start and get everything done. And then um, you'll come up to Yermo and I'll give you the drive test on, the, on our all three pieces of equipment, the brush patrol, the brush engine, and the type one engine. 
All right, so I can get you signed off and give you your DMV letter so you can go down and get your endorsement on your license. So again, take advantage of it, it's there. All right. I had a question. Yes, Crystal. Is Tony letting us come up there for more hours? Yes. Yeah. The, the, okay, cool. Yeah, it was it was shut down for a while because of COVID. Yeah. I missed and so, so many. <laughs> yeah, so now it's back open. And I okay. before you joined, I told the class, if you're gonna be involved up there and you're a student, why not get the four units of college credit? It's yep. an easy it's an easy A on your transcript for doing yep. something that you love and enjoy. And that's 80, right? 080, 080. Yeah, uh, that's FIWE. It's F I W E 083. So, oh, okay. yeah, 081 um, is 60 hours. 082 is 120 hours. I'm sorry, 080 is 60 hours. 081 is 120. And 082 is 180. And 083 is 240 hours. So, yeah. for every, every 60 hours you work, you get one unit of college credit. It's so worth it. I loved it. I and know it is. With taking the class on fire apparatus and driver, we can go up there and at least kind of sit in the engine and like play with things and learn about it. No, you'll be training right along with the regular guys. Yeah, okay. no, you're going to be a part of the training. You're not, we don't want the students to just sit back and watch. You're actually going to be in there training alongside. You're going to yeah, be given turn. Up there. You're going to be given turnouts and everything, and you're up there to learn, and you're up yeah. there to respond to calls. When you're not responding to calls, you're up there to train. In the evening, yeah. we barbecue steaks. We have corn on the yeah. cob, garlic yeah. toast, salads, and then we have a study session for those of yeah. you that are in EMT. It's worth okay? it. You become a family, okay? And and so nobody, great. nobody, we don't let anybody fail. When you once you get into the fire family. You got friends for life and we yeah. don't let anybody fail. We stay yeah. up all night working with people. Yeah. Okay. Because do. everybody that works at Yermo has been through your shoes right now. Yep. Okay. So um, I'll, I also have fire chiefs uh, come up there and recruit. I know that Chief Johnson from the city of Calamasa came up there and took six people. And, and now they're all working full time firefighters at Calamasa. Um, so the, the, you know, it That's is, it. yeah, it is what it is. It is what you make it. So that's what I said. If, if you're willing to go the extra mile, then my staff and myself, okay. Are willing to be the, uh, Hey, this is, a, an, uh, I'm sure you understand. We will be the wind beneath your wings. Okay. If you want to soar like an Eagle and fly like an Eagle, then hang with an Eagle and pretty soon you become one. If you want to spend your entire life hanging out with crippled turkeys, pretty soon you become one, okay? And you won't ever fly. And it, it just- I don't want to be a turkey. <laughs> I know. Well, it, it just amazes me because those of you, when you go to Yermo, you'll see something up on the wall and it says, um, you'll see some, some crusty fire captain. And there's a quote that says, it just amazes me, the young men and women that come into the fire service that when they were born, God gave them wings so they can soar. I just don't understand why they choose to crawl. You understand what he was trying to say there in that quote? It's like we give people- Yeah, young, definitely. Yeah, and the we, resources- Go ahead, Crystal. Yeah, just the resources you guys give us, like with my experience being up there, like you guys pushed me all the Way. all the drills we would do I thought I was dying <laughs> with that mask on and the tank on me and they held my hand and they picked me right back up and they're like we're going to finish this just breathe and yeah it's great yeah. it's great yeah you can work up to the A team the A team suits up in full turnouts okay with the SCBA and they run all the way down yep. to um, <laughs> uh, uh, what's the restaurant down there? The the fifties diner. Original Del Taco. Yeah, and then they turn, they run all the way back, and the first and one, and the first one that runs out of air cooks dinner. Not easy. That no. is not easy at all. <laughs> I know, but we yeah. make it. We make it fun. Okay, I mean we're, we're a family when we. Oh work yeah, up we there. dance a little. <laughs> I had one of my students from Rio Hondo played Santa Claus this year, this uh, Christmas. And we went around and gave out a ton of toys uh, because Yermo is, sits in Silver Valley and Silver Valley 
is the poorest part of the poorest county in the state. And to see some of these kids that didn't have clothes, didn't have shoes, okay, come out. I mean, half my firefighters started to cry because they made these kids so happy. And uh, so it was a really worthwhile experience. And, and you, just, you just don't know the rush that you get when you go to somewhere and the baby's not breathing. And due to your training, you just tilt the head, open the airway and give one breath and the baby starts crying. Okay, and to see the look on the parent's face and to have them write letters to the newspaper about what you did and everything. I mean, what do you think when a background investigator comes out there and, and checks and looks at all the stuff that you've done? I mean, come on, who would not want to hire you? Who would not want to hire Isaac, who went to school, got a degree, is a state certified firefighter, has experience, has his firefighter one, has his driver operator 1A, 1B and has an associate's degree. Who would not hire him? You see, compared to the guy that's, that, well, I think I'm gonna to go to work today and, and apply. And then he, he has nothing to offer, no college, no degree, no work experience, nothing. What better way on your resume to verify your work experience than to have Tony, the fire captain up there, print out on state fire marshal report, everything you've done since you've been there, Okay, and to have it transcripted on your college transcript. You see what I'm saying? You, you're not going to be the guy that says, oh, yeah, I've been on the fire department 10 years at Boeing. And then I did I went down and I did the background check. And well, he wasn't really on the fire department. He was a security guard. And part of his duties was to go around and look at the fire extinguishers once a month. You see what I'm saying? It's so don't think that that stuff's not checked because it is. So. I really want to get you guys pumped up and um, hold on one minute. Hey, Mark, can I call you right back? I'm on a Zoom meeting with fire students. Okay, bye. Bye. Hey, you see, that's just that, again, that call was a city councilman. And I already know what's going to ask me. He's going to ask me um, how many students do you have in the work experience program so I can come up and meet them. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I get those calls all the time, all the time. And so it's like, why not share the wealth? Because you guys are tomorrow's firefighters. I'm, I'm, my career is, is done. I mean, I'm, I'm getting ready to hand the torch off to you guys and gals. Okay, that's why I want you to be the best of the best because who the hell do you think is gonna come take care of me when I call 911? <laughs> you guys, and if I don't take care of you, then I'm not gonna have anybody take care of me. So this is why I like going the extra mile. Any questions? Okay, now I wanna make sure I'm clear on this, okay? Do not get hung up on an assignment, okay? You can call me anytime or we can have a one-on-one -on -one and I, I can share computer screens with you, okay? You can show me the issue you're having. All right, and if you, need, if you need some extra time, take the extra time. I want you to get it done. In the fire service, we have a standard, okay, that anything below 80% is failing. All right, there is no average or substandard firefighter. So I want you to strive to get the top grade in the class. And as you can see, I've given you the study material you don't have to take notes when you listen to the lecture. I give you two attempts on each exam. I've opened up the entire course so you can work ahead. And, um, and I want you to leave uh, whatever course you're in with a good skill set when it comes to the discussion boards and when it comes to writing. Okay, I want, to be, I want you to be able to go on an MCI call with me, okay, because I work shifts up there. And then we take care of the patients, we take care of the call, and then come back, and then you're able to sit down and write a terrific fire report. Okay, and that's something you can be proud of because um, it's, it's, it's sent to um, the NFPA, to the National Fire Administration, and it's sent to the State Fire Marshal's Office. So when some background investigator says, well, let me see what kind of write, you know, report writing experience he or she has, 
boom, Tony can get right up there and pull it out and say, well, here's an example of one. All right, so it, it, may, it, may be, um, it may be uncomfortable, but you know what? How can we grow? And I'm talking about myself. If you don't step outside your comfort zone, if you don't constantly challenge yourself, okay? If you're only satisfied with the status quo, you're never going to grow. Never. All right? So I want you to challenge yourself. All right? If it's difficult, then get on that bulldozer and, and knock that wall down and keep moving forward. You know, make your family and your peers proud of you. Any other questions? Okay, Jordan, um, did, you, did I answer your question? Chief Smart was to say, clear as mud. Yeah, there you go. All right, so take advantage of those state fire marshal classes coming up in March. Okay, because I'm going to open those up on Monday, even though the classes don't start till March. <laughs> okay, it's Fire 081 and Fire 084. And um, the point of contact at the college in the admissions office for the fire program, her name is Maria Cruz. Okay, she's at extension 5802. She is the point of contact for all state fire marshal classes. Um, and then the next class I'm going to be teaching is fire instructor one and fire instructor two. So those of you that want to be able to teach at a community college or teach at a fire academy, because you got to have an associate's degree and you got to have experience on a fire department, you've already got that cert out of the way. All right, that's another, and that cert counts toward not only your firefighter one, but it counts toward uh, becoming a fire captain in the fire service one day. Yeah, Jordan. You have a month yet for the instructor two yet? I've, I've applied for it. I'm waiting to hear back from the state. All courses, how, all courses have to be approved by the state fire marshal's office. I love how long it takes to state fire train people now with COVID. I know, none of them are working in the office. They're all working from home. Jeez. Any okay. other que Any other questions? Uh, no questions, but I passed my EMT class. Awesome. Yay. Now, did you take the national yet? <laughs> okay. Did you pass it? I passed the cognitive, and I'm still uh, waiting for my appointment in March with Pearson View. They're backed up for, from COVID, so I just yeah. read. And yeah, and you do know, right, Copper Mountain College is now a national registry test site. Yes, they're just so backed up. They, they're backed up actually through, I think it's April. Yes. Um, it's probably because of all the nurse classes and everything. We're all trying to go and get tested, but I'm right. going to go. I, mine's in L.A. Um, in the beginning of March. Okay. And uh, not only is Copper Mountain. I want to only is card. I come back up there. Yep, and not only is Copper Mountain a testing site, but so is the Marine Corps base in Building 1530 for active duty people. That is also a, a National Registry testing site. Okay, at their education and training, Building 1530 on base. Any other questions before we call this meeting to an end? All right, all I ask is that you uh, keep up with the course announcements, the grade book uh, comments, and check your emails and you'll be doing just fine in the course. All right. If you want to talk to me one on one, let me know. We can do it over the phone. We can do it over a private Zoom session. Um, if you're interested in the driver operator classes, let me know. Contact Maria. She'll walk you right through the registration process. And if you have any questions or need any help, um, just let me know because you're going to be, you're becoming a part of the fire family. And our job is to get you to where you want to be. Okay? We're not going to let you fail. Yes, Jordan. I'll be calling you later on this afternoon. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. I guess uh, I don't have anything else um, to talk about. I'm going to get ready for my criminal justice students next. They're not as squared away as the fire people, by the way. I don't <laughs> Last semester, okay. Um, I taught the CJ classes online. There wasn't one CJ student that knew how to operate Canvas because none of the CJ classes were ever taught on Canvas. So I really had my hands full in the late at the night 
doing Canvas classes to show the students how to use Canvas so they can successfully continue on. So the fire students, even your writing ability is far more superior. So um, take a look at other people's discussions and, and use mine as an example and you won't have any problem, okay? All right, I'll be safe. Hopefully I'll see some of you up there at Yermo. And I look forward to working with you throughout this semester and in other fire classes. And hopefully I'll, I'll have the privilege to uh, work side by side with you running calls up there. Okay, you all take care. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.